picture, as you can see, was taken in a busy American city. This picture was taken at exactly the same time and at the same spot. Question, how was it done? A modern motion picture camera photographed the traffic in action. While the Daguerre camera, the great-great-granddaddy of all cameras, was used to photograph the buildings alone. The action of this camera is so slow that there isn't time for moving objects to register on the film. On the other hand, the buildings being stationary gradually formed a sharp, clear image. And why use the Daguerre camera? To show that any picture of America without automobiles is hopelessly out of date. Today, the automobile is part of any American scene. Every man, woman, and child in America could go riding at the same time. And if we wanted to, we could all ride in the front seat because there is a car or a truck for every three persons, almost 50 million motor vehicles. How many are 50 million cars? Bumper to bumper, they would stretch around the Earth at the equator seven times. The distance we drive our cars and trucks every day would take us on five daily round trips to the sun. But the real importance of the motor car is in the way it has opened up new horizons in our way of living. And that brings up a very interesting fact about one out of every seven American workers. Let's see what it is about that one worker out of seven. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven. Sir, what do you do for a living? You've heard of tea testers, haven't you? Well, I'm a toot tester. Yes, this man is a toot tester. He listens to automobile horns in a factory to be sure they are tuned to the proper musical tone. If anybody should ever ask you what the proper musical tone is, it's E flat combined with now let's try again. Uh, pardon us, sir, but would you tell us what business you're in? Why, certainly. I'm a farmer. And uh, what do you grow on your farm? Well, you might say I grow automobiles because I own part of the four million acres of farmland used to grow raw materials for paints and lacquers and insulation used in motor cars. And you, sir, it seems that you're a miner. What do you mine? I mine automobiles. You see, uh, it takes the miner to dig the iron and the coal and limestone for automotive steel. And then, of course, uh, some of us dig the uh, copper and lead and molybdenum and sulfur that go into automobiles. You might get answers like that in any crowd anywhere, from any one of over nine million men and women who make their living directly because of automobile transportation. That's what we mean by one out of seven. Let's see how many it takes to make over nine million people. We'll begin with the city of Los Angeles, which has become our fourth largest city. Suppose every family in Los Angeles should decide for some reason to move elsewhere. Then suppose into each house left vacant, there should move a family of a worker in the automobile industry the one man out of seven. Actually, Los Angeles isn't nearly big enough to hold them all, nor, for that matter, is the whole state of California. You see, there'd be the steel workers, the men who make steel for the automobile and their families. There'd be the families of glass workers who make automobile glass. We'd have to find homes for the families of all the workers who build tires and batteries and parts. And we'd have to make room for the 800,000 families of the men in the big motor car and truck assembly plants. Yes, it would be moving day for one out of every seven families in the United States. And we'd have to include the moving van driver and his family too. Because you see, he is one of more than five million drivers who drive for a living. Trucks, buses, and taxis. And while you're about it, did you ever stop to think of how many people it takes to maintain our roads and highways? Well, quite a few. Because on the highway miles of America, we could drive to the moon and back more than 14 times. 
Well, does that account for one out of every seven workers in America? Not quite. But it does when you add the men who sell motor cars and the men who service them. Moving the families of the one worker out of seven, gradually replacing family for family. We need all the houses in California, Oregon and Washington, Idaho, Utah and Arizona, Montana, Wyoming and Colorado, and part of Texas to find homes for the people who make their living directly because of the motor car. And this brings up an interesting question. What would these people be doing if the motor car had remained a luxury for a few rather than a necessity for so many? And what about all the people who depend indirectly on the motor car for the way they live? Looking at it this way, we can fill up all the homes from North Dakota to Texas and from Minnesota to Arkansas all the way to the banks of the Mississippi with the families of the men who use motor cars or trucks in their business. The plumber, the painter, the florist, the meter man, the rural mail carrier, and of course, the more than two million salesmen on the road. Now, it seems that we've found out something else about the motor car and its effect on our living. One worker out of seven either makes cars or parts or sells or services them. And another one worker out of seven uses the motor car to make his living. Pardon us, sir, but what do you do? Why, I'm a traveling trimmer. Yes, this man is a traveling trimmer who makes his living with his pruning saw and his truck. Yes, for that second man out of seven, there are all kinds of jobs that you might not even think of as being connected with the motor car. The traffic policeman and the people who make and sell traffic lights and parking meters. But would you think of railroad engineers? You would if you knew that transporting raw materials and finished products to keep our American system of individual transportation by motor car rolling takes four million freight car loads per year. One sixth of all retail business firms are connected with the automobile. Yes, even including little Jimmy's first business venture, the motor car makes business for America. And one out of every five retail sales dollars in America changes hands because the motor car made it possible. Yes, the motor car has been a key factor in all the ways we do business in America. But it has had even greater effect on the way we live and the pleasure we get out of living. Being able to drive out into the country has made many of us want to live in the country. And the motor car has made it possible for millions. Today, suburban construction is more than three times the construction in the city. And just as the motor car is a tool for working, with more than half of us using it to go to and from our daily work, so it is a tool for enjoyment. It puts America at our doorstep for business or pleasure. Whether you're traveling on business or pleasure, the chances are even that you'll travel by motor car. More than half of us take yearly vacations, and most of us take them on the highway. As a result, the tourist and resort industry ranks among the three most important industries in 16 states. We have seen how the Daguerre camera, a camera from the past, can take a picture of the past to show how our horizons have been expanded by the motor car. And the greatness of America has been that we are never content to stop at the horizon we can see. We know that there is another and another horizon beyond. The motor car industry, as it has recognized its responsibilities in our progress through yesterday to get where we are today, is already at work on the design of tomorrow, exploring, developing, testing, to improve the cars we drive, to make them safer, more comfortable, more enjoyable. If we are to realize in full the motor car's vast potential for good, we must use it and care for it wisely. The motor car has been the key to open new horizons, not for the few, but for all. And all of us share in the responsibility of safeguarding the benefits it has brought. If we plan for the future, 
if we look ahead to clear all obstacles and roadblocks, if we recognize the importance of this great individual freedom of movement, the motor car will be the key to our ever-widening horizons of tomorrow.